We thought we knew how it all began. A single flash, a perfect birth, a universe expanding into silence, following rules we believed were unbreakable. But then we looked deeper. The James Webb Space Telescope was meant to confirm our story, to show us the first light. Instead, it found cracks in the script, galaxies too massive, too bright, too soon. Structures that shouldn't exist, yet do. It's as if the universe skipped its childhood, leaping from chaos to order in an instant. Even Nobel winning physicists are beginning to doubt the timeline. Adam Rees, who helped prove the universe's accelerating expansion, now warns, if the data is right, then our model is wrong. Because what Webb has revealed doesn't just challenge our understanding, it threatens to rewrite it. Out there, at the edge of time, are giants born before they should have been, light that shouldn't exist, still reaching us through the dark. And the deeper we stare into the void, the more it stares back. Maybe this isn't the same universe we thought we lived in. Maybe the moment we looked deeper, something changed. When James Webb opened its golden eyes, scientists expected whispers, faint glows of the first galaxies, fragile traces of the universe's infancy. Instead, it saw giants, fully formed structures burning with impossible light, scattered across the deep past like monuments that shouldn't exist. They weren't faint or formless. They were organized, mature, ancient, even in a time that should have been too young to allow such order. According to our most trusted model, the Lambda CDM, the backbone of modern cosmology, galaxies take billions of years to form, clouds of gas slowly swirling, collapsing under gravity, birthing stars one generation at a time. But Webb's vision shows something else. Galaxies existing just 300 million years after the Big Bang, a blink after everything began. That's not enough time, not enough gas, not enough universe. These galaxies didn't just form early, they formed perfectly. They converted nearly all their material into stars, leaving behind almost no gas, no dust, just pure light. That shouldn't be possible. It violates the timeline itself. To build something that massive so quickly, the universe would have had to condense matter instantly, skipping every step we thought was required for creation. It's like watching a child speak in full sentences before taking their first breath. And yet, it happened. So now we're left with two choices. Either these galaxies aren't what they seem, or the story we've been telling for decades is wrong. Because these aren't small errors, they're fractures in the very fabric of cosmology. The deeper we look, the more those fractures multiply. Galaxies too bright, clusters too old, light that shouldn't reach us, yet does. Every new image Webb sends back isn't confirming our models. It's undoing them. Maybe the Big Bang wasn't a single birth after all. Maybe it was just one transformation in a universe that never truly began and never really ends. For more than a century, humanity lived inside a single, elegant story, a universe born in fire, expanding into silence, cooling, and slowly forming the first stars. It was a story that gave us comfort, a timeline that made sense, a beginning we could measure, and an end we could imagine. But now, that story is starting to fall apart, because what the James Webb Space Telescope is showing us doesn't fit anywhere inside that tidy arc of creation. If these galaxies really existed just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, then time itself no longer adds up. There simply wasn't enough matter, enough energy, enough universe for them to exist. According to the Lambda CDM model, the foundation of modern cosmology, everything began 13.8 billion years ago, a singular flash, then silence, then structure, step by step, through the slow choreography of gravity. But Webb's data doesn't follow that rhythm. It shows something far more unsettling, a cosmos that doesn't crawl toward complexity, but leaps into it, a universe that seems to have skipped ahead in its own script, forming galaxies faster than physics should allow. It's not just an error. It's a fracture in causality itself, a contradiction written into the laws that define reality. Because once you admit that the timeline is broken, everything else begins to unravel with it the age of the universe, 
the nature of dark matter, even the very concept of a beginning. And so, the whispers have begun. Maybe the Big Bang wasn't the start of time at all. Maybe it was just a phase change, a transition between two cosmic states, like water freezing or vapor condensing. The universe might be an ocean forever shifting between forms. Some physicists now speak of a cosmic bounce, an endless sequence of expansions and collapses, universes giving birth to new ones across unimaginable cycles. In those models, time doesn't begin or end. It loops, it folds, it breathes. If that's true, then what Webb sees out there, those impossible galaxies blazing at the edge of visibility, might not be the first of anything. They might be fossils from a previous reality, fragments left behind by a universe that came before ours, light bleeding through from a world that ended long ago. And that possibility changes everything, because for years, astronomers have quietly found anomalies, stars too old, clusters too large, light too distant to fit the model. They called them outliers, statistical noise, mistakes in the data, they moved on. But anomalies don't disappear, they accumulate. And one by one, they're starting to align into a pattern we can no longer ignore. Even Nobel laureates, like Adam Rees, one of the very scientists who proved the universe is expanding, are now saying the unthinkable. Maybe we've misunderstood the cosmos itself. Maybe what we're seeing isn't a fluke of observation. Maybe it's the truth finally breaking through. And if that's true, then we're not just rewriting the equations, we're rewriting reality. Stand on Earth, look up at the night sky. Every point of light you see is ancient. Each photon, a traveler that left its home long before there was life here to receive it. When we look through the James Webb Space Telescope, we aren't just seeing distance, we're seeing time itself unravel. Each image is a ghost, a memory of a universe that no longer exists. But the deeper we look, the more we realize that distance and time are not what we thought they were. They bend, they stretch, they lie. The universe is expanding, not like an explosion moving through space, but like space itself stretching, carrying everything with it. There is no center, no edge, no place we can point to and say, it began here. Every observer, no matter where they are, stands at the middle of their own observable universe, surrounded by galaxies fleeing faster than light. Beyond a certain boundary, called the Hubble Sphere, space expands so quickly that even light can never return. And yet Webb still sees beyond it. It sees galaxies that should be lost to us, their light stretched thin by billions of years of expansion, whispering from a time when space itself was younger than imagination. But this too is an illusion. Because the galaxies Webb shows us no longer exist as we see them. They've moved, changed, drifted beyond reach. What we're really looking at are fossils, shadows of their former selves. We're staring into a past so distant that its light has already been swallowed by the future. And in that realization lies something deeply unsettling, that everything we see is already gone. Take the galaxy GSZ-14 one of the farthest ever observed. We're looking at it as it was just 290 million years after the Big Bang. Today, it's unreachable. Space has expanded so much that its current light will never reach us again. It has slipped beyond the event horizon of our cosmic understanding, not because it moved, but because reality itself stretched between us. That's the cruel paradox of the universe. The more we see, the less of it we can ever touch. So, maybe time and distance aren't constants at all. Maybe they're illusions created by our limited frame of reference, local phenomena within a reality that doesn't play by the same rules everywhere. If the universe is infinite now, then it always was. The Big Bang wasn't a point in space, but a transformation of it, a shift in the state of being that happened everywhere, all at once. And if that's true, then what Webb is showing us isn't the beginning of creation. It's the beginning of awareness, Every new image, every impossible galaxy, every photon from the deep past is a reminder that we are trapped inside a perception of time that might not be real. We measure, we calculate, we name, but what if all those numbers are just shadows of something larger, something we can't yet see? What if we are like fish in an ocean, mistaking the movement of waves for the flow of time? The universe doesn't move 
the way we think it does. It doesn't follow our logic or obey our desire for order. It simply is vast, chaotic, unknowable. And maybe that's the point. Maybe the truth isn't hidden because it's far away. Maybe it's hidden because our minds were never built to hold it. So when we look into the abyss, we're not just observing the cosmos. We're watching our own understanding fall apart. We're seeing the limits of what it means to be human reflected in the light of galaxies that should not exist. And in that silence, in that incomprehensible stillness, something whispers back. Maybe the universe isn't expanding away from us at all. Maybe we're the ones drifting away from reality. The James Webb Space Telescope was built to confirm our story, to find the first stars, the first galaxies, the first light after the great beginning. But instead of clarity, it brought contradiction. The galaxies it revealed weren't fragile or young. They were vast, organized, and possibly old. They shouldn't exist, and yet they do. And that simple fact tears through the foundation of everything we thought we knew. Maybe the Big Bang wasn't a beginning. Maybe it was a transformation, a shift from one state of existence to another. If that's true, then our universe might not be the first or the last. Just a brief awakening in an infinite cycle, a single breath in something that never truly sleeps. We thought we had a map, clear, defined, comforting. But the more we see, the more it fades. Every new discovery stretches the edges of understanding and replaces certainty with wonder. Maybe that's the real purpose of looking up, not to find answers, but to remember how small we are in a universe that refuses to be understood. Because perhaps the truth isn't waiting to be solved. Perhaps it's the silence itself, vast, indifferent, alive. And when we stare into it, when we listen long enough, something stares back. If that thought stays with you, leave a signal. Subscribe to The Cosmic Unknown, because what's coming next might not just rewrite science, it might redefine what it means to exist.